Today I just want to talk about why you have to be careful when you're setting up a terminal colour scheme. And what I mean by this is that those initial 16 colours that you set in your theme, those colours all actually have defined meanings within your terminal. So those colours all have names, and if you want your theme to actually make sense when you compare it to the documentation, then you need to actually make sure those colours actually line up with those proper names. Now obviously, you can go and use something like Pywall or just a custom theme if you really want to. But you do need to keep in mind that if you do something like that, then your theme isn't going to line up with the documentation whatsoever. So if you want to set up colours for individual applications, you're going to have to work that out for yourself. And that's the reason that I use a fairly standard looking colour scheme. Because I want my theme to actually line up with the documentation. So if I want to say, set some colours in a program like EXA or LF, then what's in the documentation will actually line up with what's in my theme and I don't have to kind of guess what's going on. Now, I think a good place to start is kind of talking about how your colour scheme is defined. Now, I'm going to be talking about this in a more general sense. I'm going to be using Alicrity as an example, but it doesn't really matter what terminal I'm using. The base 16 colours are kind of just generic to all terminals. So let's just have a look at that. So as you can see here, You've got your cursor colors as well. This isn't something that's a part of your base 16 colors. And you've got like selection colors and things like that. The only colors that we actually care about for the sake of this video are these 16 right here. So this set here and this bottom set here. Alacrity also includes another one. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, it includes a third set. Its bright colors are actually its dim colors. It doesn't really matter, but... Basically, the only colors that we care about for this video are the normal and the dim colors. So, the normal colors, you've got eight colors here. So, you've got black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, and cyan. And then for the dim colors, their actual names are something like light black, light red, light green, light yellow, light blue, light magenta, light cyan, and light white. Now... The reason this is important, as I said, those are the actual names in the documentation. So if you wanted to set your colors in EXA, and we can do that right now actually. So if we go down to, it actually says what the ANSI color names are for this application, which makes it a bit easier to set as well. I, th I think it uses the same names that something like LF uses as well, but that's not too important. So as we can see here, the number for green is 32, the number for red is 31, blue is 34, purple is 35, cyan is 36, white is 37, and then for any of the other 256 colors on your terminal, you can use this right here. This part isn't really too important to this video. The other colors besides the first 16 are defined by that first 16, so if you're gonna have a weird color set for the first 16, the rest of them are gonna be weird, but the only ones we care about are these 16. Now, why does this actually matter? So let's say we wanted to set my text in EXA to be something like green. So what if, I, actually let's see what color my folders are, I'm not even sure. So my folders are blue. So if we say did something like set blue to be red, what is gonna happen there? Let's just have a look at the Alicrity config again and set that up. So let's go down to blue, and let's set blue to that same color there. So B026, 26, okay. So as we can see here, these are still actually blue as defined by my terminal, but because I've set the color to red, now they're actually red. And this is the problem that you really will start to see. So if you set up your colors to misalign to the documentation, you're gonna have situations that pop up like this. We can also do another one. Let's set the green here to be a different color. Let's set it to be yellow. So F2, yep, okay, cool. So as we can see now, all of this text here has changed from being green to being yellow, but in the documentation and in the actual configuration for this application, it's still defined as being green. And this is the main problem that you'll start to see. And this isn't just a problem with Alacrity, this is a problem with every single terminal out there. So if you use ST, URXVT, Xterm, Kitty, even your TTY, the exact same problem is gonna crop up. If you set your colors to be colors that don't line up with the ANSI colors in the documentation, then it's not really gonna make sense to try to actually set those colors. There are ways you can mitigate this, and that is by using a terminal that supports true color. Now, this is why, one of the reasons at least, why I like true color terminals, because I can set my application colors, at least for applications that support true color, 
to be any single color I want while also maintaining my basic color scheme. So if you've seen my Vim, for example, if we load up Vim now, it's not actually going to be affected by any of these changes. Actually, I'll bring up a file so we have a better look at it. Okay, so as you can see, this looks like my Vim always does. And there's no changes here. And that's because I've got an application level theme set here. And this is completely independent from my terminal theme. Obviously, if I wasn't using a true color terminal and I was setting it with the terminal colors, we would still be seeing that exact same problem. So if I was using a terminal color to set this green here, now that green would be set to yellow as defined by our terminal. But because I'm using a true color theme here, basically true color, if you don't know, I'll do a, a bit more of a dedicated video on it, but true color basically lets you do the 16.8 million colors that are defined by RGB. But anyway, that's, that's not too important. The point I was trying to get at here was that if you want to set up custom color schemes, I would really recommend doing it on a per application basis and then just having a very, very basic color scheme for your terminal. Obviously, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. My point for this video, though, is that if you want to make it so you can actually use the documentation, then you have to actually work with that documentation. You can't just do whatever you want. And this isn't just the case with those applications I showed you as well. We can try another one. Like, let's say we look at something like HTOP. As you can see here, HTOP looks a little bit weird. I'll set it back to the default color scheme just so you can see how it's supposed to look. This is more like how HTOP is supposed to look. So you're supposed to have this green bar in here and then this blue up the top here. Now, none of this is to say that you only have to have this one exact color scheme that I'm running. Mine is kind of a really high contrast version of the basic sort of color scheme. And obviously it's a dark version of the basic color scheme as well. But if we look in here, you could say have this green in here be a bit more yellow or this yellow be a bit more orange or this blue. Maybe you want the blue to be a bit lighter and you want the cyan to be a bit darker or you want your white to actually be more white. Now, you can do any of that and doing that will make sure the color scheme is still, I guess, understandable through the documentation. But if you're going to set it up so it doesn't line up with the documentation, you have to keep in mind that that is what you're doing. And most people don't really talk about that when they talk about using a program like Pywall. They'll just talk about setting the colors and then ignore the rest. But if you do use Pywall, as I've said earlier, it will make all of the documentation completely useless. So make sure you do keep that in mind. And if you want to use that, then go right ahead. That's entirely fine. This video hasn't been to say that you can't do that. But you do have to keep in mind that when you are setting stuff up like that, you are kind of setting yourself up to basically have a color scheme that really doesn't work, especially in applications that don't let you actually set colors. And there is a lot of those applications. So let's say, for example, that you couldn't set your colors in something like Spaceship and you had this blue here and this green here looking very, very similar. There wouldn't actually be a way to fix that if there was no way to change this color scheme. The only way to fix that would be to actually fix up your terminal color scheme. Because of those applications, that's another reason why I like to run a very basic theme. Now, one thing I did want to mention is I've actually got a script here to basically check what your terminal color scheme is so you don't have to use something like NeoFetch. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but here's a script that I found on, I think, Stack Overflow or something. So it's just in a file called color. And basically what it's going to do is go through all of your terminal colors and print them out. Now, on a normal terminal, this first eight colors would be your normal colors and this second eight colors would be your bright colors. But as I mentioned earlier, Alacrity has a weird way of defining colors where this is technically called bright and most of the time it doesn't actually act as the bright colors. A lot of the time the dim colors seem to act as the bright colors. Most terminals though don't have these three color palettes and you won't have this problem. So this first set of eight colors here is your normal colors. So your normal black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, and white, or in my case, a light gray. But yeah, this is defined as white. I kind of understand that this is my white color. But normally when I need an actual white, I'm going to use my foreground color. But anyway, that, that's not too important to this. Then the second set of colors is defined to be your bright colors. Now, as we can see in here, because I'm not using my TTY, I've also got access to all of these colors here as well. And most applications that will let you set your color scheme on an application basis actually will let you access all of these colors. Now, there are going to be applications that don't let you do that and are going to force you to be using these first 16 colors. That's another reason why you actually need to have a proper setup for your first 16 colors. 
and obviously the applications that don't let you set a color scheme at all, they'll be defining them based on either the first 16 or based on this entire palette, depending on how the application is exactly set up. But as I was saying, you're not actually limited to just 16 colors a lot of the time. A lot of the time you actually have access to all 256 of these colors, which obviously isn't as many as if you were to use a true color terminal, but it's still enough where you can set up a theme that I guess suits your liking. It may not be exactly what you want, but it isn't going to just be a boring 16 colors. You can a lot of the time set up something that kind of does look nice. Like say you wanted to have something with 196, which is kind of a nice red, and you wanted to use 214, which is a bit of a lighter orange. If you were to pair those colors together, you could probably come up with some nice looking color scheme. And that's kind of my main point. Even if you are just using this basic, basic color palette, it isn't as limiting as it may seem to be. Obviously, you won't be able to post perfect screenshots on somewhere like Unix Porn, but if you're like me and you want your documentation to actually remain meaningful, then this is kind of a limitation that you have to live with. But as I've said before, you always have the option of running a true color terminal for applications that actually do support that. And if you didn't realize, the color scheme that I'm actually using for Vim is a... It should be fairly noticeable to anyone who's ever used uh, VS Code because it is the dark theme for VS Code, basically. This is, in my opinion, the best looking color scheme. It's something that I really can't live without at this point. So everywhere that lets me set up a color scheme, I'll probably try to bring this along with me just because I think that it is one of the best looking color schemes out there. Obviously, everyone's going to have their own personal favorite color scheme, whether that be for Vim or Emacs or whatever it is out there. And if you're using a true color terminal, then you can have it looking exactly the way that you want it to look, and it's not gonna actually affect your basic color scheme. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I wanna thank my patrons, Nathan, Andrew, Road, Hercule, Larry, Ray, and Silver, who make this channel possible. Without their support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. So if you wanna support the channel on Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as some Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use on this channel, as well as some other stuff, like just literally anything on Amazon, the Amazon affiliate links will work. I've also got my alternate video platforms for my BitTube and my library and my social links. So Discord, Telegram, all of that sort of stuff. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment. And also remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.